Welcome to San Andreas, fool. And what a warm welcome it was. This game is what many consider to be the definitive Grand Theft Auto experience, and a lot of GTA fans consider it to be the magnum opus of the 3D era, if not the entire series. I've even heard it described as the golden eye of the 2000s. Back in 2004, San Andreas really seemed like it had it all. I feel like the only open world game that's even come close to it in terms of scope is Red Dead Redemption 2. For a game from 2004, the map was huge as well, and even nowadays it still feels bigger than it really is sometimes. But like with a lot of open world games, the map is something that can often go through many different iterations before reaching what it becomes in the final game. San Andreas is no different. If you've seen my previous videos, you already know where this is going. There are two places that I know of so far that the beta map of San Andreas can be seen at within the game. One is at Mike Torino's ranch, and the other is at a UFO-themed bar appropriately called the Lil Probin. Both maps are covered in these dots pinpointing random locations across the state, and it's pretty funny because I remember an old issue of Tips and Tricks magazine that I had from 2006 had a list of San Andreas mysteries, and it included this map. This was back when everybody thought there were UFOs in the skies above San Andreas or that Bigfoot was in the game somewhere when he's actually in the credits. Presumably he's friends with the developers. But it turns out this map has more interesting things to it than whatever random locations are pinned on it that a bunch of people probably spent hours at looking for nothing. I kinda wish I held on to that magazine. I can't find it anymore, so I think I lost it. At least I still have my old game informers, though. They contain a ton of interesting previews of older GTAs and other really interesting stuff, too. Anyway, let's take a closer look at this map, shall we? Unlike the initial concepts and beta maps for Liberty City and Vice City, San Andreas might not look that much different on the surface. All three main cities are there, and the overall layout seems to be the same. But to notice any big differences, you have to look carefully at it. Right off the bat, the first thing you'll notice is that the town of Bayside is not there. Instead, the freeway just loops around it like it normally does and heads straight into the desert. In the final game, they added an entire town in this space. You can kind of tell that Bayside was a later addition when you visit it. The entire town is located at the bottom of a huge cliff, and it almost feels like it was tacked on at this spot. It's as if they decided later on that they wanted to base something on Sausalito or other towns in Marin County. Another sign that Bayside was probably a later addition might be the fact that, besides the boat school, there's really nothing else there to do. No restaurants, no ammunitions, no barber shops, clothing stores, or anything else for the player to really go and see. The boat school could have easily been located somewhere else on the map during development before they created Bayside and decided to place it there instead. An extra mission for The Truth, called The Truth Is Out There, was going to be set in Bayside, but that ended up being cut. On the subject of the San Fierro part of the map, what's this thing in the middle of the bay supposed to be? The texture is kind of blurry, and I've heard before that it's the same stationary ship that's in the final game and that it's just located further away from the city in the beta version, but within the game's files, there's extra map renders that were early versions of race maps one of which shows an early San Fierro, and it's definitely an island. Of course, this is a body of water based on the San Francisco Bay, and out of all the islands that are located in the SF Bay, the most famous one is Alcatraz. I think it's highly likely that this place would have been based on Alcatraz just because of how well known it is, given that the rest of the city seems to be based mostly on famous areas. The placement and shape of the island is also similar to how Alcatraz is in real life. Imagine how cool it would have been to explore a huge abandoned prison in San Andreas. It probably would have been like an environment out of Manhunt, and I'm sure a cool mission could have been set there. Watch Dogs 2 at least gave us a nice rendition of Alcatraz 12 years later. Besides these two main bits, there just isn't much else that we can tell about the beta map from this image, just because of how low quality it is. That's why the extra island in the bay just looks like a smudge rather than another landmass. It's even lower quality than the old Vice City map that was in the Sunshine Autos garage. Funny enough, the beta map of Vice City made its way to San Andreas as well. It's in a set of garbage cans in Angel Pine, and unlike the one in Sunshine Autos, this time it's in full color. Unfortunately, it's only a very small and very compressed image, so the quality is simply not there. However, we did get a bit lucky with a much higher quality beta map of San Fierro being found inside the driving school. When you overlay it on the final map of San Fierro, you'll notice quite a few differences. Let's go from north to south. Originally, this set of piers to the left of Pier 69 was just one pier instead of four. It's hard to say why this change was made, since these extra piers don't really serve any purpose in the final game. They're all just carbon copies of each other. The only unique one is the original one, which has a submarine parked in the water next to it. Also, these rock formations next to Pier 69 were another later addition. Maybe to act as a mini-tutorial for swimming underwater in the Mission Amphibious Assault. When you look at them from this angle, they really do look out of place, so them being added later on makes sense. 
Further to their left, this smaller pier wasn't there originally, and it looks like the northern edge of the road between there and the bridge was dotted with trees. It also looks like the land around the fort and Battery Point was expanded just a little bit as well. Also, this area in Juniper Hollow was originally just one big park, probably based more closely on the Presidio due to its location. By the final game, they decided to add more roads with apartment buildings and houses running through it. It kind of feels more residential now as a result. Also, the Palisades neighborhood originally had a beach running along the entire edge of it going all the way to the bridge. But unlike Vice City, where they decided to add on more beach for some reason, this time they actually cut down on the amount of beach that was there. Strangely, the in-game map indicates that sand is still located along here, but there's no beach. There's also a lot of empty green spaces in Calton Heights, but I can't tell if they're just unfinished areas or maybe more park areas that were later removed. The naval station also had a different shape to it. Overall, San Fierro's map is mostly full of little differences. A missing road here, an added car dealership there, some of the docks being shaped differently. I think the biggest change happened in the central part of the city in the Queens District. The entire neighborhood was completely gone. While it's possible this area could have just been unfinished, part of me doubts that this was the case. If you look at the area to the right, it's almost completely blank, probably because these were some of the last areas to be designed for the city at the time, and instead of buildings being located here, it's just completely empty. But the Queens and Hashbury districts had trees and what appears to be grass textures inside of it, instead of just being completely blank. If this was actually going to be a park and not just a placeholder that they added trees to, I'm guessing that this is going to be San Fierro's equivalent of Golden Gate Park, another major San Francisco landmark that San Fierro was missing. And if that was the case, maybe basing a place on Golden Gate Park was sacrificed in favor of a small area based on Haight-Ashbury. Much like in real life, it's a pretty vibrant and unique area, so I'm kind of glad they decided to make it a neighborhood instead of just one huge park. Maybe they felt that San Fierro already had too much green space or didn't feel big enough compared to Los Santos and Las Venturas, so they took out the parks and added more buildings instead. And that's basically it as far as San Fierro is concerned. And I'd say something about Las Venturas and the desert part of the map, but there isn't really much to say about it. I really wish we had a higher quality image of the beta map of San Andreas, it would be so much easier to compare it with what we ended up getting in the final game. All we have are just close-ups of San Fierro and also of Los Santos. Vadim M did a video on the beta map of Los Santos several years ago, and I've provided a link in the description for you to watch his analysis. That's about all I have for now. Thanks for watching. See you next time.